what should I pack for my upcoming Costa Rica trip? Let's talk about all the things that are really necessary and what's not to plan and pack to set up for success in Costa Rica. This video is for you if you don't want to overpack, if you don't want to figure out on your second day there that you packed 90% of unnecessary stuff, if you don't want to spend a ton of money on stuff you won't use, if you want to pack as light as possible without forgetting the essentials, if you don't know what to wear for tropical weather. And we're talking about all the recommendations from other travelers that they've wished they knew before packing for their Costa Rican trip, plus valuable tips from locals such as myself. Here's the number one mistake that travelers coming to Costa Rica make. Are you ready? They repeat the same mistakes that other travelers that came to Costa Rica made. Wait, what? How is this possible? Well, it's because luckily there haven't been terrible consequences to most of them. So that's why the recommendations keep on going. Confused? Worry not, I'll explain. I'm talking specifically about one thing sandals or hiking sandals as they claim to are, they are tivas keens or even crocs in costa rica locals call them the gringo sandals gringo if you have not heard it is how locals refer to people from the united states they do not say this in a discriminative or diminishing term it's just as you call us the people from costa rica a tico or a tica however most locals tend to generalize and they call most internationals a gringo or a gringa so why are they called calling them gringo sandals. It's one simple reason. Because us, the ticos, we don't wear them. Let me explain with real life examples. Here, we have a traveler on a Facebook group who had already come to Costa Rica making a post recommending to wear keens because that was she and her boyfriend wore throughout the trip and it worked for them. She says, they were the best for Costa Rica. We can confirm after two weeks. Immediately, a well-informed traveler and a local tica respond against the recommendation because of the dangers. You can read Mark saying, those are the worst type of shoes for safety and hiking in the jungle. You have zero protection. And Raquel saying in Spanish, this is not, there is not one tourist guide in Costa Rica that would recommend that type of shoe. Which I follow up agreeing with them and the reasons why. I say, I agree with a comment that was written in Spanish. As a local, we would never wear that kind of shoes because they leave our feet exposed, which means that you could get insect bites such as bullet ants, scorpions, spiders, snakes. We usually cover our feet and legs as much as possible. And if you pay attention, you will see that all local guides actually wear high rubber boots. To this, the original traveler who posted answered me saying that for the hikes, she, she, she switched to hiking boots. And this is a common misconception. She says, well, when we go hiking in the jungle, we are also wearing clothes, shoes, socks, and pants. The misconception here is that all of these animals don't only live in the jungle. They're everywhere in Costa Rica, including rivers, in the garden of a house or a hotel, in a waterfall, on the side of the road, etc. So what's the best advice to follow? Basically, to notice what the locals wear and do the same. If they're wearing what they're wearing, they're wearing it for a reason. Let me show you. The first thing you'll notice is that most of the guides and some locals such as myself and my brother, we love wearing rubber boots. Now, I know this would be a pain to pack because they're huge, so I wouldn't recommend doing so. However, if you do want to go completely like a local, then you can find them for cheap pretty much anywhere in Costa Rica. We call them botas de hule, which literally translates to rubber boots. You'll most likely find them in cheaper supermarkets and rural and humble stores. And yes, you'll find them for toddlers, kids, and adults alike. One big recommendation is that if you're venturing out for the boots, do pack some good socks. Because if, if not, you're in bad for some bad blisters and chafing. If we're not wearing rubber boots on our journeys, we're wearing hiking boots. I have both ankle hiking boots and lower height ones. The three essentials that you need to look for in your hiking shoes are that they're quick dry or waterproof, they have a great traction and grip, and that they fit you perfectly. And mostly this means that you have to go like a full half size up or a full size up. 
If you're going to buy hiking boots for your trip, make sure to do so well before your trip starts so you can measure and fit and change sizes if necessary. And also make sure to wear them out a few times so you can break into them. The third type of shoe that you'll see us wearing a lot when we're outdoors is just an old pair of sneakers because I'm sure you don't want your brand new Nikes to get up all muddied up, would you? These are great to wear, for example, on ATV rides or on a night out and walking around town. And lastly, plain old flip-flops are what we wear at the beach. We don't do fancy flip-flops at the beach, such as Birkenstocks, for example, because once again, they will get dirty and wet. Just a cheap pair of flip-flops will do more than good. We're not really used to wearing water shoes. You'll, these you'll see probably just in kids at the pool, but honestly, we're either barefoot or in flip-flops. But I do understand that as foreigners, you might not be used to the rocks or the shells on the beach, and you might want to have water shoes. So if it would make you feel comfortable, then by all means, pack them. And for shoes, that's it. You don't need heels, you don't need absolutely anything else. Be reminded that most tours require closed toe shoes. So be mindful that you have at least one pair of those for your adventures. Okay, so what else do we locals wear when we are venturing in our country? You'll see us wearing a lot of dry fit clothing, hiking pants, leggings, and SPF clothes. The following two things are key to know about Costa Rica and will make a difference in what you pack. You will sweat a lot and you will get wet a lot. You want to pack clothes that will dry fast and that won't weigh a million pounds when it's wet or humid. Honestly, for all of my curation trips for our Authentic of the Beaten uh, Path Go Guides around Costa Rica, I just end up wearing the same three or four outfits everywhere. So let me, make you, uh, let me take you around those items I've put on the website and explain them. Also, to make this simple, I've included the links to these so you can easily find them if you need to do some shopping. Just make sure to go on my website, click on the Essential Packing List tab, and there you can find my recommendations. Okay, firstly, for the woman, although for men, it's the same, so listen up. These two first items that you see here, I pretty much wear them everywhere. When I went on the three-day hiking trip inside Corcoao National Park, I just had two pairs of these pants, two different colors, two of these steady hold tops, one of these long sleeve SPF shorts, and one of these SPF button-up shirts, and I switched those around. Oh, and the SPF hat, of course. At night, I was just switched to a dry feet t-shirt, such as this one and a pair of leggings, and that was that. Honestly, this could be your uniform in Costa Rica and you would be more than fine. As for the long sleeve SPF short, I have a quick story. I went snorkeling at Caño Island, and it was just a quick 30 minute first snorkel, and then we would go to another snorkeling spot. I went in my bathing suit, all covered in SPF, of course, and happy as a clam. Well, as soon as I was back in the boat, I could already feel that I was burned. So I decided not to go to the other snorkeling spot because I didn't have a shirt I could put on to protect myself. To cut the story short, I had burned so badly that that was in March, and I'm recording this video in September, and I still have the tan lines from that day. It was the worst sunburn I've ever had in my life. I couldn't sit or rest my back in a chair for at least a week without wanting to cry in pain. Ever since, I don't go anywhere without my SPF long sleeve shirt. Okay, moving on. I'm also giving you two recommendations of hiking boots, both of which I actually own. Honestly, for me, the Columbia Uncle High boots are preferable. They're comfortable, they're waterproof, they have a great grip. My tip is that I always have my flip-flops on my car, so whenever I finish an adventure, I just take off the boots that are usually wet or muddy and switch them to my flip-flops. On the essential gear section, you can see I recommend a shoe dryer that if I'd only known that this existed sooner in my life, I would have carried one in my car forever too, or just so handy for the Costa Rican humid and tropical weather. And these two last items are essentials, at least for me. Bandanas are great either for cooling down, you just kind of get them wet and put them around your neck, for keeping your hair off your face, for covering your mouth from dirt when you're ATVing, for example, covering your neck from the sun, etc. Just super multi-purpose. 
And lastly, a rain poncho because tropics. You know, just don't bring your rain jacket. They usually don't work for Costa Rica because they're too hot for our climate. And then for the men, the recommendations are pretty much the same. Same purposes, just of course designed for men. In the men's section on my website, you can check out the recommended items. For kids, pretty much the same. You want as much dry fit clothing as you can and bring old clothes if possible. They will get super dirty and worn off. Don't bring the new stuff. You will regret it. And possibly you might want some water shoes for your kiddos. So in the website, there are some good, good finds for that too. My number one tip for your kids is keep them well protected. As much as PF clothing as you can, always with a hat on, always with tons of sunblock and mosquito repellent as possible. As you can see, for neither man, uh, woman, or kids have I listed bathing suits because most of you already have one or you have your personal preferences on bathing suits. But it's quite obvious that you need to pack many of those, right? Clear? Clear. Okay, good. Now on to essential gear. If you're seeing this video because you bought the plan your trip to Costa Rica without the overwhelm course, then in your PDF, you'll see this tip mentioned by a smart traveler. This is what she says. Bring a soft cooler. I know it might seem excessive, but it has proved to be one of the best things we bought. You can bring it as a carry-on and stuff some other things in it. You will not regret it. This is a hot country and your beer, your sodas will get warm quickly. I love a co cold beer on a hot, steamy Costa Rican day. And she's a thousand percent right. I don't think there's not one Costa Rican over the age of 18 whose family doesn't own a cooler. Honestly, you cannot go on a trip without one and what I love about this one it's like super easy to fold and pack of course you want waterproof backpacks and fanny packs microfiber towels that are dry super quick you might want a good pocket knife just in case your lodgings don't have a great one or just for so many things that are tropic related you know <laughs> another item that you'll find in every Costa Rican household a folding chair we literally bring them everywhere <laughs> but to sum it up I love what this other fellow traveler has to say about it I just bought a lightweight beach chair that collapses into a bag about as small as a wine bottle and only weighs two pounds. Perfect when you need a chair for the beach or wherever you may need. Best purchase I've made so far. Five last great essentials, packing cubes. I don't know how people pack without packing cubes nowadays. It's just perfect to keep things organized and personally, it just helps me not to overpack. Then we have this towel that is also a cooling towel, which is perfect if you're someone who overheats or if you have kids because you can just soak it in water and put it around the neck and or the body and it keeps you cool for hours. Then mesh bags, I find them to be perfect to start storing dirty clothes that I need to wash or when I go to the beach and I need somewhere to store my wet bathing suit. Next to last, waterproof lead headlamp. I just find headlets, headlamps to be so much more handy matter of factly, than flashlights because you have your hands free. In Costa Rica, it gets dark super quick. You can expect it to be completely dark before 7 p.m. And if you're anywhere rural, which I'm sure you will, it will be surprised at how dark it actually gets. You will always, always, always need some sort of lamp light. And lastly, in the essentials gears, a portable Mofi charger. This is Kind of a given, no? You will be taking lots of pictures, videos, and doing so many activities that you will most likely run out of battery. I tend to prefer the Mophie brand, but you can obviously choose one to your liking and you'll most likely already have one at home. Remember to pack them in your carry-on, not in your checked luggage as a lithium battery. And lastly, protection, skincare, and health. First of all, all you're packing in your essential medicines, right? Whatever you take for a prescription, pack double. Also bring your doctor's notes just in case. If you have any allergies or illnesses, wear medical bracelets. Also, this is something that I mentioned in the PDF of the course, but if you wear glasses, always pack an extra pair. With so many activities and adventures, hopefully not, but you might lose them or break them somehow, and you will want to have that extra pair with you so that you can continue enjoying and actually seeing the rest of your adventures throughout Costa Rica. I'm someone who wears glasses, and for me, this has become a no-brainer. Also, if you can wear contact lenses, it's better to use those on your glasses. That way you don't have to worry about losing them or that they get blurry because of humidity or having raindrops on them that impairs your vision, etc. 
Okay, moving on. The typical medical, medical kit I recommend for Costa Rica includes allergy medicine, such as Allegra, something for diarrhea, such as Imodium, motion sickness prevention, such as Dramamine, an itchy relieving cream, such as Benadryl, a pain reliever, such as Aleve, Vaseline, which is great for so many things, but specifically for chafing, a topical wound sealer and flex fabric bandages for blisters and tiny accidents, because regular sort of bandages will fall out for sure, once again, humidity. For protection and prevention, I recommend a broad spectrum reef safe SPF, such as the Sunburn brand, a good electrolyte drink mix to prevent dehydration, full body cleaning wipes, which are great if you have a full on itinerary and you want to freshen up a bit before going to a restaurant. And they also work great for kids, a great mosquito repellent. This is not exactly the most eco-friendly, but it was actually recommended to me by one of the greatest guides in Costa Rica when we went to Corcovado, because honestly, sometimes you just need something super Super strong. Second to last, I recommend bringing these travel detergent sink packages because they're great for washing your clothes in your lodging for you to reuse over and over. And lastly, this is more of a personal recommendation, but I hate bringing tons of tiny liquid bottles with me. And I found that these bar shampoos are great for traveling because they double up as shampoo and soap and they're not, well, liquid. And let's be honest, the shampoos and soaps they usually have at the hotels leave your hair and skin super dry. And they're usually not the greatest brands out there either. Now, if you do buy the shampoo bar, just remember to bring them in a plastic or aluminum container so it makes travel friendly after it gets wet. Also, and most important to mention, if you're visiting the cloud forests such as Monteverde, Chirripo, Poas Volcano, and San Gerardo de Dota, you will need to bring some layers because the temperatures can drop at night. Make sure to bring a scarf and a jacket that can keep you warm. Prepare for like 12 to 15 degrees Celsius temperatures or low 50s in Fahrenheit. And finally, just as a recap, please unpack or don't even think of packing jeans fancy clothes, jewelry, at least not a fancy and expensive one, hair dryer and or straining iron, you will most likely always have your hair in a bun or ponytail anyways, heels, any electronic that's not essential such as laptops and whatnot. So that's it. If you're in the course, make sure that you check your PDF because there are some great suggestions over there that might not have been mentioned in this video. Also in the website costaricacoolrights.com, you can find all of these recommendations with their links to make it easy for you to find them and also go over the items once again. And lastly, I've designed a free checklist that you can download for your upcoming trip and have it handy for when you're packing. You can find it linked below. Oh, and one last thing. These are just recommendations, but you don't have to purchase absolutely everything. Beware of consumerism and don't let anxiety get the best of you. Just listen to the reasons why and if it's something that you definitely need then, and you don't own it, then go ahead and buy it. But if you have this in your home, pack what you have. Remember that the older the clothes, the better because everything will get super dirty and wet anyways. And that's that. Happy travels and I wish you an authentic Pura Vida experience in Costa Rica.